Hey, welcome everyone to episode three of the Simple Gear podcast. Because I am pretty sure that this is episode three, and that this is Simple Gear. If not, then I'm just bad at doing podcasts, which is also a valid possibility. Tonight, I am joined by the beautiful and wonderful C Tactics, who once became a Hall of Famer in three different sports in two different decades. How are you doing tonight, C? Well, first, all I had to do was cut off their legs, and second, I would just watch them squirm. And that's how I became a Hall of Famer in two different decades. Yes, that segues very well into this episode of Simple Gear. And by very well, I mean not at all. Yeah, not as well, but how about this? This, okay, well, never mind, the image is gone. <laughs> nope, okay, or, Shiro's gone as well. They're all okay, gone. So, okay, so everything's gone. Well, that's okay, those things happen wait, sometimes. Wait, 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 wait. <gasps> Subscribe! Ooh, I still got that one. Yes, please subscribe because if I get 3 million subscribers by next Tuesday, then I will have more than 2 million subscribers. Yes, I agree. We should we should get you way more subscribers. Yes, we should. But first, let's talk about some folk gear. And this episode had a lot happen. One thing I've noticed about the season is that it feels like the, the events are very condensed. Like, there's a ton of stuff that happens in every episode. Yeah. Uh, I My... I have literally a whole page of notes. There's like just a little tiny bit for the synopsis down at the bottom, and the rest is just notes about stuff that happened. Yeah, I have like a page and a half of notes, and those notes were being taken as we were watching it, so I couldn't pause. So yeah, lots of notes. Yeah, I ended, uh, I ended up rewatching it because I had to, you know, get the images for this this podcast. But yeah, Cephal Gear so, episode yeah. three, which is titled "Penny Dreadful," which I think is just. Dreadfully awesome. Did you like that? Uh, yeah, I was ignoring you to uh, tweet out this podcast. Damn it. Turns out America is evil. You know, Tsubasa is okay after all. Death Lolly and Chainsaw Lolly are good at guessing things. And Chris puts ammunition in her cleavage. Simple Gear is amazing. I could not have summarized it better myself, especially with that last line. I, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, so I guess... Uh, let's just start off with the start because that's a good place to start. Yeah, America's <laughs> evil. They had the bracelet. Yeah, it's like, well, America, like, had, they took control of the mummy, but it seems like they were really after the bracelet. And then they uh, took the took that to Los Alamos, which is like an American research lab place thing. It's apparently real. Yes, it is real. I have, uh, I've actually heard presentations from people who uh, research there. They apparently do some cool stuff like have golden bracelets uh yeah i heard about that that's in like room three of building 313 was it in building 69 no that's where they keep twin Tail season two. Oh, so it wasn't in area 51 <laughs> that's no they moved it to uh los alamos after the ninjas started storming area 51 oh damn but yes we found that america is evil apparently because it's america they're I'm trying to activate. This. They're trying to activate the bracelet. And one of the things that they brought up was that how America sees himself as a like guy in the world with their wisdom. And then there's some ideas there about like science and logic and all that in the supernatural, which is most of gear. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, just... continue. Yeah, so I just thought that was interesting. One of the themes that they brought up, and they haven't really explored it too much so far, but they might this season. And I always think that's an interesting idea. I just like that America's the bad guy for once. I'm so tired of America being the good guy. And I guess it's because, you know, movies that are made in America, you got to America be a good guy, get in there with your guns and shoot people. And uh, I'm really tired of that. I'm really tired of that gung-ho America is always great. Let's, let's have America be bad for once. And uh, I say we should make America bad again. Oh, yes, make America bad again. Let's do it. That may be a bad idea, actually. Well, it does make sense considering that this is a Japanese one. And yeah, Japan does tend to like America. But at the same time, if they're going to make a superpower to be a bad guy, what better country to do that with? I mean, we did bomb them two times in a row. So And that that was after setting Tokyo on fire. Well, yeah, that's true. (laughs) I mean... We are not good people to, to Japan, and I think it's totally fine, and I like it, and 
We need more America. America is bad. Okay, let's yes, just it's, they're evil. Yes. Yeah, so speaking of bombing lots of things, we found out that seventy thousand people oh, are yeah. either dead or missing after the attack last episode on the concert. Yeah, which that was a that's an astonishingly high number. Yeah, like even for Symphony Gear, it's like okay, they have this concert of a hundred thousand people, and more than two thirds of them are either dead or missing afterwards. That's that's just insane. And they spent so much time building that place, didn't they? Uh, probably. I mean, did they talk about it in the last episode um, about we built this thing and it was hard to build? I don't remember that part, but I was also preoccupied by the lollies in that episode. I may have just been imagining it. Hibiki is also talking to her parents in this episode, and well, she taught. It's kind of li- depressing for her because she says most of the time they're they're not together, and it's right. only rarely they are. And uh, I think Miku kind of really said something really thought provoking, and Miku says maybe everybody has feelings they can't share. Yeah, that I thought was just a really interesting uh, uh, note. And I'm sensing some parallels between Hibiki and Mika's relationship versus that of uh, Hibiki's parents. How Hibiki and Mika seem to like be more open with each other. They have a stronger relationship. And if they can really connect and be willing to share everything with each other, then they'll have a strong relationship for the future. Yeah. Uh, also... She looked sad when she said that. I wonder if Miku is hiding anything. No, I, d- I didn't exactly get that from this scene. But reading it out and on paper, maybe Miku has something she wants to tell Hibiki? Yeah, and they've done so much to show the relationship between Hibiki and Miku this season. Like, they have all this action, but they make it a point, like, every episode. Remember, there's Hibiki and Miku. They're a thing. So there's this is important. I can't tell if they've established them as a couple or not. They've implied it like since episode two of season one. It's they haven't definitively went. Yeah, them two going out. It's just it's always been like Hibiki, my shining star, and and all that stuff. And, and we, I kind of like it that way. That way, it can be seen as a like purely platonic relationship with all the lessons you can learn from that, or it could be romantic, and it works both ways. Hell yeah, it works both ways. I knew that was the wrong phrasing. <laughs> uh, so Subasa from, from the last episode, she's still out. Uh, but, yeah. But Maria still up. She's doing her thing. Yeah, and like they made a comment about Subasa, like physically she was fine, but her brainwaves were messed up. Yeah, which whatever that seal invasion thing was, that that I think that had a part in it from because later on in the show they they bring it up uh, the 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 person who did it bring it up and it didn't work on hibiki so i'm thinking yeah it's like they're tr- i think they're trying to do it on all the sinful gear users when they chance to they're gonna they're gonna do it on all of them and they're gonna do it on chris and they're gonna be like it didn't work she's her brain's just full of guns <laughs> where it's like or they try to do it on the death line like wait i can't access your brain it's not there <laughs> it's because i'm Death. Yes, and obsessed with barbecue because of whatever reason. Oh, we will get to that. <laughs> oh yes, we will. that. Uh, this is info gear. <laughs> uh, we then cut to a scene where the the new monster animal lollies. I don't know what they're called, really. I d- I call them succubus lollies, and that's a really bad name to call lollies. But that's just the thing that comes to my mind. Um, I was gonna say there's like cat lolly and demon lolly. That's probably that much work? better. That's probably okay. way better. Okay, uh, yeah, that, that will not get us demonetized. Um, well, I don't even think you have monetization on your channel, do you? No, I don't. No? That's why I need to get 3 million subscribers so I can get monetized. <laughs> You'll be more than monetized. You'll have, like, two people that are like, Hey, how you doing? Are you doing okay? You need help? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I like having people. People are good. Um... She talk, yeah. the, the two the two lollies talk about how they weren't born monsters which is a funny line but it actually you know tells them tells us that they weren't born monsters and then people yeah. see the deal going off to which i'm like did this just need a conflict to get this started 
<laughs> I think they're just showing like the these Illuminati lollies, like they need help from the outside somehow. They're desperate. They've already we've already established that they are not as strong as Sifo Gear uses, so they need to find some way to make up for it. You know, we see like they're also sick, so they need the blood, but we'll get to that more later. They're also expendable, even though they go through great lengths to actually like keep them alive so i'm not sure if they're expendable or not in that sense i don't know how they're expendable okay. also illuminati lollies that's a good name <laughs> yes yeah, I, I need to add that to the description i'm sure that will get us views <laughs> as it should uh then we see one of the i think the most ridiculous thing i've seen this whole year and i've seen a lot of ridiculous things uh the noise are riding segways yes that's ridiculous even by the anime that we watch <laughs> it's not like it's not like it's not ridiculous in the sense like they're they're like shooting things into the moon and but it's ridiculous in the sense that someone thought to have these monsters ride segways and the fact they thought that over all of these like explosions going off and these ridiculously designed awesome looking characters yeah, it's like some noise dry, riding segways. Yeah, like all the explosion stuff. Like I can see why someone would think that was cool. Like, it's like, okay, we need Hibiki to parry tank shells with her fists, or we need them to like have a missile fly through the helicopter. It was like that makes sense from some point of view. It was like, okay, the noise need to chase someone who's who's on a segway. How they do it? They also ride segways. <laughs> like, like this show is really creative. I can't tell if this is really creative or creatively bankrupt because <laughs> they're, they're riding segways it's like really creative or really stupid but probably both <laughs> i think i'm okay with it i'm not sure and then uh I, I, continue yeah i was gonna say this is why this is simple gear because it is simple gear this is true so chris and abiki jump out of the helicopter chris does her transformation sequence to once again, one of the most ridiculous things I've seen this year, where she transforms and she gets a, re a dual revolvers, and I'm like, that's badass. And then w the bullets are in between her cleavage. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I actually have a quote from you when they were jumping out of the air. Or I think it was when they were said, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it's... I can't tell if chris is the best character or not but what i can tell is she's easily top three she's definitely in the top six this is true this is true um yeah. and then she's into the transformation scene by saying bang but with like a japanese accent so yeah, like bomb or whatever that was and i'm like oh yeah. yushiki people remember that show even though i'm almost 1000 percent certain it wasn't a reference in yushiki but i like to think every time a character says bong it's in yushiki or they're doing drugs or they're doing drugs but or, yes, they have, they have a... or they have bullets in their boobs <laughs> that's also a good reason to say bong so yeah we had the uh when the illuminati lollies fighting them trying to do the uh mind seal thing on hibiki but that didn't work because yeah. it's hibiki yeah because hibiki's her her brain is full of fists. <laughs> that could be taken in different ways, but yeah, and they made a comment here that the Simple Gears do not have the Ignite modules anymore. And I'm trying to remember like why did that happen? Is there something I missed from last season where that was explained? Yeah, whatever happened to those things? Okay, good. So I wasn't the only one who missed that. In the comments, please explain what I why I'm missing because we missed lots of things. I don't remember them ever. I think maybe someone took them. Maybe it's like vague. It was remember, like they were like sacrificed for like one of the final Hibiki being Jojo scenes. Oh yeah, Hibiki should be Jojo. Again. She was at the end. Of, yeah, that maybe oh, that'll no, be. No, what, no, 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 no. That'll that be how great. she do, blows up the moon. She does it for like a good amount of time too. That was a great ending. <laughs> that was like okay. If someone has been watching Jojo, <laughs> which season four had tons of references. They had the whole ninja thing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they watched tons of Gurren Lagann before they were full of drilling Hibiki did. Oh, yeah. They even said pierce the heavens at one point. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, they did? Okay, I was thinking they should have said that, but... Uh, they should have in the first episode. <laughs> okay. Would have been fitting. Uh, the guy who, who gets caught and they get chased uh, says, Angels, this is hell but heaven. 
Oh yes, that was that was weird. Was that was that a reference to Ava? I if it was a reference to Ava, it'd be like they got an AT field. <laughs> Uh, would that fit? I don't know. Anyway, so we have the bad guys. They're the simple guys defeat them. They run away, and then Chris tries to shoot them. But Chris she gets blows the them up. Or yeah, like how do they even survive that? Or how did the suitcase survive that? <laughs> this show, how it solves all of its problems is by blowing the problems up. And if it doesn't work, <laughs> just blow them up again. <laughs> See if it works. <laughs> If the explosion doesn't work, have Hibiki punch it. <laughs> yes, have Hibiki punch the explosion to make it more of an explosion. Yes, that it makes perfect sense. But yeah, they hit the briefcase to which the the murder lolly or the chainsaw lolly and the death lolly go catch up a barbecue party. <laughs> oh. What a terrifying enemy! <laughs> no, it's like why are we having a barbecue this time of year? Because it's winter. <laughs> I love. <laughs> This episode had so many just funny things going on, and this was probably one of the funniest things. Yeah, it was just like, you were saying, like, these lollies are all about death. How do they not know what blood looks like? <laughs> they didn't, they know what blood looks like. They didn't know it was blood packs. Yeah, which I guess makes a little bit of sense, but why would they think, like, ketchup be barbecue? Wouldn't that be barbecue sauce? Because ketchup like like you're going to McDonald's. And the way they say ketchup is just ketchup. <laughs> like, oh man, that's cute. Yeah, it, the thing about Simple Gear is like they can have these random bizarre things happen and it fits perfectly with the tone of the serious part. Yeah, which is like kind of, I don't want to say brilliant, but kind of fucking awesome. Exactly. It's like no other show could get away with the things like that, or at least not many shows. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like, yeah. You have something like Attack on Titan, like very serious, very thrilling. But like if they had that happen, it would just completely break the mood. If Mikasa got, oh god, I'm trying to remember what weapons they use. And if 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 Mikasa stored her blades in between her boobs, that would it would be quickly, quickly become one of the worst anime I've ever seen. Quickly, it's like, it's like this makes no sense. You ruined the serious mood. But Chris can pull uh, bullets out of her cleavage, and no one complains. It's, it actually <laughs> it makes, makes it, it Yeah, it actually makes it better. <laughs> Which, well, Chris has actually a lot of ridiculous transformation sequences involving her boobs. One of the seasons, I think it was maybe season two or three, like they, oh, her whole transformation sequence was based off her boobs, like transforming. <laughs> it was weird. I don't remember that, but I would believe it. Oh, there's like a there's like a gif. It's really that I can show you. It, it looks <laughs> okay. really weird. Um So yeah, besides the besides the lollies getting confused by barbecue uh about yeah, a barbecue also, party. Uh, yeah, the we Illuminati also got, attack Los Los Alamos. Yeah, they do, and we learned that um FIS was part of Los Alamos, but I don't remember what FIS is. Uh 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 food in stomach. You just remind me I haven't had dinner yet. I'm gonna go get dinner. Take care, guys. <laughs> oh God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I won't. I'm not gonna intentionally leave this podcast that's hosted on my channel. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> hey, that, that happened the one time when my internet went out. That was a fun night. Do you uh, remember that? I, uh, when did that happen? Uh, there was by, during Promised Neverland, my internet went out, so I was like commenting it with my phone as I got it set oh, up again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot that. Who could forget? That it's was clear. weird. <laughs> you know, I was commenting on my podcast because I was watching which I'm glad that you are the one actually uploading it. It makes things easier for me. <laughs> uh, well, actually, it's it's fairly simple to, to set up these things up. The hardest thing is just is just going and pressing shift s and vlc media player to take screenshots that's the most annoying thing i should remember to do that next time uh so yeah we got the uh attack on los alamos which started to foreshadow like maybe america aren't the bad guys here maybe it's it's like why would they attack their own military base and blow it up it's mexico okay so we need so we need to build a wall to keep the illuminati out oh god damn it (laughs) we (laughs) I didn't think you would go there. <laughs> Where point. else am I gonna go? We gotta build a wall around these these lollies. That's what I think. All right, we're screenshotting that one. 
What? You can't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, darn it. <laughs> And then we also noticed the uh, relic had the words the Shem Ha written on it. So I'm like, what does that mean? Or should that mean something? It's like uh, in Kanata No Astra when they go to planet Makpa. Yeah, it reminds me of a Shangri-La, but I don't know if that ties into anything. Else. Shangri-La. Also, yeah. a, a pretty bad Call of Duty zombies map. Okay, I, I have one more thing about Call of Duty today. Yeah. This, hey, this is back when Call of Duty was good. Okay, so the, there was actually like a year where that was ha- where that was true. Yeah, well, there was like two years. <laughs> well, like th- like four. There was like yeah, like four years. Like there was like Call of Duty four, and then World of War came out, and like eh, World of War whatever, and then Modern Warfare two, and then Black Ops one, and then that's it. Ah, uh, well. So speaking of Call of Duty, we got some more information from the brother of the commander, who was like feeding, like telling the commander what had happened at Los Alamos. And this is one of the first times I remember seeing him involved with the story. I don't even know who he is. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, okay, you're the brother. It's like, should I know who you are? Am I forgetting things? Do I need to look things up on the wiki again? I should probably do that before the podcast, not after. I'm going to read the manga for this after we're done. There's a manga? Yeah, there's a manga. Okay, let's go read the manga. Yay! Hey, if you guys... You know, that's an idea, you know, just saying. Well, give this video a like if you want us to read the manga. All right, I'm going to dislike it since I don't want to read the manga. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> but yeah, and then during that, we had Tsubasa come in seeming to be okay, and then she was yelled at by her grandfather for failure and all that. Yeah, which and is I... hilarious because of the ending. Well, yeah, it was, but I also wonder, like, was she still having some effects from the seal? Because the way the scene was portrayed, portrayed, I wondered, is like, is that really happening, or is that all in her mind? Like, the lights went off there, too, so... Hmm. That is interesting. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, and I wouldn't expect them to, like, reveal that, yes, that's actually what happened. The Baka fairy says, there was a scene where Milark blew up into a star-shaped explosion. Who's Milark? Yeah, I don't know who Milark is. I apologize. We're be- we're- this is the way we make up our own names for everything. <laughs> is- Where is my food? Oh, Milark is a... Okay, that's the uh, demon lolly. Oh. Oh. Oh, you're talking... In-, in this episode. Okay, yes. yeah. I didn't I didn't know that was a star-shaped explosion. I didn't even I pay attention to that. Cool- it was just a cool-looking explosion. Yeah, for me, I was like, wow, that's an explosion. Yeah, explosions are good, and they're very simple gear. Yeah, so then we got to, we finished up the scene with Subasa and her grandfather, and we got to the death lock, playing on a swing because that's what Lolly's like doing. At one point, Kirika jumps. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't call them by their names. At one point, Death Lolly jumps, and she's like, "Yay, Death Lolly won the world reward for best jump from a swing set." And I was like, "They're they're such kids." Yes, the ki- the kids finally save the world. There's something that they could do with that if they wanted to be more serious. Except really, they're they're not really written like kids. They're really written like death lollies. They're written like kids when they want to be written like kids. They're written like really, like cutesy lollies. That's it. Aren't lollies kids? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and yeah, one of the things here is like a, they're like trying to figure out what was going on, and uh, Kiriki was thinking. Well, okay, they're after, they have blood, that must mean they're after blood, which must mean they're a vampire, which means they're going to go after a blood donation center or a hospital next. To which they are literally in front of a hospital. And that is where the <laughs> uh, evil Illuminati show up. They, they both point, and the, the, or, or they look at it, and they point at it, and they're like, they're, they're going to be at a hospital. And as they're pointing, there's like a light on the hospital, I guess for like helicopters or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. The death lolly shows up, or the murder, uh, the Illuminati lollies show up. <laughs> yeah, that seems like great when they're saying this. Okay, the death lolly being stupid. This isn't gonna happen. Wait, this is simple gear. She was right. <laughs> and, and the funniest thing. I don't know why I found this so funny. It's it wasn't like I don't think it was supposed to be funny, but it was actually hilarious. Okay, so what we found so hilarious is like they were running to the hospital to deal with 
the hospital staff saying, it's past physical hours, you can't be here. And then they were just going, we're ignoring you, go and change the uh, elevator to transform. And uh, yeah, we got a cool uh, transformation sequence from uh, the Chainsaw Lolly, otherwise known as Shira Bay. At least I think that's what her name was. Yeah, and her name one is things... Okay, and it's just cool. Like every episode, we get a couple more transformations. Each one of them is really different. And it just shows the level of effort they're putting into the show, giving extravagant transformation sequences that are only used once, it seems to be. Uh, yeah, they don't, I don't, it's usually like they all get one transformation sequence every season. I right. think maybe the first season had, I think maybe the first two had a lot of transformation sequences every episode. Right. It's like they just, because this is a magical girl show, they need at least one transformation. Yeah, but then they just skip it because they want to get straight to the action. I think, yeah, I think season four started the whole like at least you know we we it's just there to show it off initially, right? Uh, which is, I think, kind of cool because it doesn't diminish the coolness of these transformation sequences if you're seeing them every week, right? Um, it's like they, they don't get old because yes, they're cool the first time, but yeah, so much. Uh, so Sh- Shirabe transforms and she has death yo-yos. Right. That's chainsaws. Yeah, chainsaws, death yo-yos, Beyblades, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> if someone called it Beyblades, I think in the comment to our first episode of this, so no. I think that one, that one fits better, but I like chainsaws. Let it rip. Exactly. <laughs> Not only that, though. She starts off by having ice skates. Oh, yeah, she's like skating around the field on her chainsaws. Which is hilarious. It's info gear. Um, so she fights the, the Illuminati lolly. Right. And they, they eventually are like, we got to team up because we're, we're a team. We're a pair. And so yes. they, they use their catapult death chainsaw yo-yo thing. Uh, yes, rocket propel death yo-yo is what he came up with last night. <laughs> and it launches, I don't know if you call this, I caught this on the rewatch. She barely grazes it, but the blade goes in between her boobs. Okay, no, I didn't. Yeah. I it, thought she dodged it the first time. She 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 leans back, and the the blade goes directly in between those things. <laughs> okay, so her boob saved her then, is probably what happened. Yeah, and then it explodes, and then because it didn't get like a you know a full on hit. Which, by the way, what happens if these lollies hit her? They would have had impaled that that poor Illuminati lolly on that chainsaw death lolly, yo yo thing. Right. What would they have done? Would they be like, oh yay, we violently murdered someone? Well, they even see the comment at the end saying like we did it, and then. Uh... Uh, the death lolly was like, I think we overdid it. <laughs> I literally have that quote written down because I thought it was funny. It was, it was a little self aware, which Sifo Gear is always self aware. But... That's what makes it so great. It's like, we know exactly what we're doing. We're going to be aware of it and we're going to do it as. Uh, so Noble Red shows up. And... Oh, right. The other enemy that's yeah, not a lolly. The, the, android, the, the android woman. Right. And she shoots an, a miniaturized, I guess, EMP out of her right. leg. She has a compartment yeah. where she just keeps those in, in like her thigh. <laughs> and she just shoots it. And then after, which, I, why did they use that? I have no idea why. What was the point? And well, because I think the, the logic... Lollies... They wanted to like knock out the power so that the Simpho gear people would have to like, they, like help the people in the hospital who just lost power. Oh, uh, okay. That, I think, was a logic, but I don't know how much sense that makes. Death Lolly immediately goes, It's dark! It's dark! I can't see! I'm like, you're an anime. Get out of here. <laughs> I, it's like, you're Death Lolly, it's your, you don't like the dark. This, well, that's also funny. The fact that they are afraid of the dark, even though they just attempted murder on someone. <laughs> yeah, and they've been like bad guys, and they, they've dealt with far worse than the dark. They literally shoot up drugs before they go into battle. At one point in the last season, the Death Lolly overdoses and almost dies. She literally starts bleeding tears. Oh, yes. That, that was Season four is good. Very good. 
Yeah, she this uh, season last episode she shot up drugs while jumping down. <laughs> yeah, they they literally went into the elevator with their like little drug shooter upper things, and were like, "We gotta go save the people with our drugs." And they didn't even like show him using it. I don't even know what the point of it was. They still had them, so they still shoot up drugs. I wonder what happened if I went to the hospital, ran into an elevator, and started to try shooting up drugs with the deal. <laughs> they would probably. Would would call some probably call the police. Yeah, I think. So. All right, I need, I'll be right back. I need to go test something. <laughs> oh no! Don't do it. Uh, so, uh, android woman, girl, Noble Red. Which, by the way, Noble Red's a pretty cool name. Uh, yeah, I like that name. I don't know if that's her actual name, but let's go with it. She goes full Android sixteen and shoots her arms at somebody. And I just wanted right. her at that point to go. I'm here to kill Goku. <laughs> I remember that uh, android. That was a while ago. Android looks cool. He's got red hair. Exactly. He should just show up and then be blown up because this is info gear. After they all, well, I think the Noble Red's like, I'm here now. And then the Illuminati Lolly is like, yes, we will use the data list thing. And I'm like, why is she so excited about that? But then she's like, you know, we can't use it right now because we're not at full strength. And I'm like, well, that actually kind of makes sense. Okay, the trio is called Noble Red. That makes sense. Oh, okay, okay. So what's the girl's name? <laughs> uh, actually, I have Vanessa written down. Maybe that's right. No. I don't know why I wrote it down, but I did, like, right after she my note about saying she set off the EMP. So I'm going to assume that was me writing down her name. Uh, so her name is Vanessa, then? <laughs> yes. Uh, so... Then I guess... Yeah, something else uh, about them is that they made the comment that like, they were, the Noble Reds were fighting for their family. So, like, what, like, what's their motivation there? I think we'll get more into that later. Probably next episode, I would assume. Yeah, probably. There's a lot the season's trying to cover, and if it's a, you know, they should just go ahead and say, you know, we said this is going to be the last season. We're going to do six seasons, and then we're going to do a movie. No, what they should do is make the season like 26 episodes. I'm okay with that. Yeah, exactly. I'm okay uh, with more, that. more simple gear is simple gear. Exactly. Uh, uh, so they they like you know they run off and escape and the death lolly is so mad she slams her scythe down and yells death. <laughs> yes, that's, I knew. I remember she yelled death for some reason this episode, but I forgot why. She was just like death, and I'm like, man, you are such a death lolly. <laughs> like you are literally all about death when you're so frustrated. The, that the first word comes to your mind to yell is it just like normal things like damn it it's just death okay I have a story to tell you after this podcast oh damn someone gonna are you friends with the death lolly uh no but of all the co-workers saying stuff about dying oh damn uh, so in this frame though once again C Tactics may be onto something with his video on his main channel about Symfo Gear. Um, about them the blowing moon, up the moon the moon was in frame they made sure. sure to show the scythe and the moon oh so are they going to kill the moon some and well I mean also the first episode of this anime would have had someone on the moon literally to activate something but, oh yeah that, that thing happened I forgot there's plot <laughs> well there's also a lot of plot as well <laughs> This show, I'm glad the show has as much plot as it does Chris probably has most of the plot. <laughs> exactly. And then they give some plot to the other characters too when they feel like it. Even when they don't have any plot to begin with. And they for some reason gave plot to the Death Lolly. Yeah. They, maybe the Death Lolly. They are giving a lot of plot to the Death Lolly. She she literally danced on a pole, which was the, her, did her scythe. And then she rode the scythe into battle. <sighs> Aren't you glad this is Simpo Gear? I love Simpo Gear. <laughs> I seem disappointed, but really, it's just a part of it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yes, it, you, we could do without it, but at the same time, it makes it more. Hibiki is going to. Faka <laughs> Fairy says, Hibiki is going to, air quotes, fist the moon. <laughs> Probably. If that does not happen, I'll actually. I I I want her to punch the moon so bad, <laughs> like so bad. I feel it within me every day that I wake up, and I wake up, and the first thing I say in my head is, 
I think you better push that damn moon. I swear to God. No, I thought you were gonna say that's what you scream every day when you wake up. <laughs> Just that back has gotta punch the moon. Wait, I should make that my ringtone. Oh damn it. That, that would be mine, fun if it went off. Mine is uh, all night going. A phone call is here. <laughs> oh great. Yeah, okay, I need to call you afterwards. <laughs> you don't have my phone number. Don't worry about it. Uh, so uh, at the end. So, they... I guess move on to the after credit scene then. Was it an after credit scene? I thought so. I don't remember. Who cares? Uh, the final scene, whenever it was. Yeah, the, the, really, the the plot twisty thing. Right. Yeah, we found out like Subasa's grandfather was the one who's commanding the, the Illuminati and giving them these noise and all that. So yeah, that was just a major twist because so far he seemed to be like trying to help the Symphogear users. Like, okay, I, or even if he doesn't completely agree with him, it's like, yes, we need to work together to save Japan. It's like, is that really what he's after? Or is he trying to use the power of the noise and the Symphogears for his own purposes to maybe like fight against America? Yeah, it turns out he's evil. And I wonder, like, if we wouldn't watch the previous seasons, would that change our mindset with that? I think, I want to say it was fairly obvious, but I didn't pick up on it. Yeah, and I feel like in a way they were making like cartoonish villain you know, things. He's thinking, okay, yeah, he's not a nice person, but not a, a bad guy. But yeah, maybe never, we're wrong. I never thought, like, I knew he was not a good person, as Baca Ferry says. His boss's grandpa is a bad man. <laughs> I, yes. I, I knew that. Like, I knew he was not uh, a good dude. He is, He's very much... Um, not not, not, good dude. Not, not good dude. Uh, but I never thought that he would, at the end of the series, betray basically his own nation to try to save his own nation. Exactly, I agree. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to piece together what you said, but I do agree. <laughs> it's a little confusing, but basically. Yeah. I guess what his character is supposed to be is that he believes so strongly in the old ways that he sees he sees Japan moving forward in one direction. Right. And not the band. And and uh and so his idea is that he to, he to stop all this change in the direction that he doesn't see fit is to take matters into his own hand and get the Illuminati lollies and uh cause some havoc yeah and something i thought of when you're saying this is that thematically you could tie into like, the show as a whole because like he assuming we're right he like wants japan to be powerful and all that he wants the power to like fight against america to resist them you have the america trying to do all the research on the bracelet and everything there they want more power but at the same time the simple gears are more of like a unifying voice voice they want what's best for everyone and that would seem like the power of their songs just like unite people. Everyone can understand them, and that's the power of music. It's like the it's like they have all these different sides, and the Symphony Gear users kind of caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, not only that, but like we said at the beginning, America is the, the the bad people. I also like the fact that the only good people is song, <laughs> and America and Japan are technically really bad. Like like right. the people behind. Uh, these the, like the people with power are bad people. Well, yeah, it's like I don't think they're like completely bad, but it's like they see like we need power to protect our nation, so we're going to do bad things for like the greater good. And America's probably the same thing. It's like okay, we need power. Us having power is what is best for the world as a whole. We're going to do this, even if they have to like compromise the morals to do so. So, what would be awesome? I think. Old Samurai Showdown. Tsubasa and Tsubasa's grandpa. Ooh, yeah, they need that. And then they meet under a tree, and there's Sakura everywhere on the ground. And it's it's storming out. It's very dark and moody, and they start fighting. And there's no music. There's no explosions. It's just sword on sword. Right, like, the, like a Rurouni Kenshin battle. Yeah. Like Blade, or like Blade of the Immortal, or like uh, the that 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 game. Sword of the Stranger. That they what was the game? Crap, the PS4 game they showed off. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Some nice samurai okay. action, 
people getting sliced in half. It doesn't matter. That's how you do it. Exactly. And while that's happening is when Hibiki goes to fist the moon. Exactly. Hibiki's like, Miku, gotta do my job. Gotta go fist the moon. Miku's like, yeah. wait, what? Why'd you say it that way, Hibiki? <laughs> because this is what Sea Tactics would want. And when I get back, we're gonna fist. <laughs> and not in the uh, literal sense. <laughs> I'm gonna let I'm gonna let that let I'm gonna let that simmer, Miku. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what I meant there. No context. But we're gonna I'm fist. Sure there, I'm sure there have to be some doujinshis or something. Oh god. I don't think I want to see those. I, I don't want to either. That's weird. Okay, that gives me ideas, but I should probably not do those ideas. Uh, this is all the notes I had. Yeah, I got through all, all my notes except for our random quotes. Oh, yeah, like you were saying, like who let these kids. Sinful gear people. <laughs> that was a good quote. Uh, Sinful gear is great. Yeah, Sinfo, this show continues to get a Sinful gear out of 10 for me. Uh, I think this season, I think we said it last week, I think this episode is one of the best episodes of Sinful gear that I've seen in the whole series. And we said that last episode too. Yeah, so it's it's like, I think what I said last week where I said it's getting to the point of where you can just legit recommend this show without having to like, like, you know, you know that weird thing when you have to explain to people like, no, no, give it a try. Really? Like, it's really good. Now I think it's to the point of where it's like, you can back it up really yeah, like, well. It, like, yeah, these, these first seasons are like low budget, but, but when it, once it gets to the end, it's, it's really good. Yeah, it's like a show that you will like be the anime community think, yes, this is a good show, as opposed to if you're recommending twin tales, they're like, okay, what is wrong with you? This anime is trash. Yeah, this I don't think this anime was ever trash. I think it was uh, initially the first two seasons were kind of flawed heavily yeah, in were, some ways. I feel like Symphica is really now it's really figured out what exactly it wants to be. Yeah. I thought this As opposed was... to being like before it's like it's like part music, part magical girls, part cool action. It's really just like, this is like a, just like a really well-made, awesome action anime. With exactly. Good designs, good character designs, good music, really good music. The music in the last two seasons have been really well done. Oh, and I do want to bring up, there is a song that was released on like one of the CDs. And I'm trying to find the name of it real quick. I probably should write this down. But it's like, uh, Kimi Dake Ni? And it's a song by Hibiki that has not been in the show yet. But it's like much somber, much more somber, much more emotional. And it definitely feels like it could be foreshadowing more of what's going on with uh, Hibiki and Miku by the end of the series. Yeah, I mean, this show, it, it's initially, it was, it was rough. But then it like quickly, I think it quickly found its voice in season three and four. And then mm -hmm. now season five is around. It's one of, if not one of the better shows already this season. Maybe not like, I don't know. It's not like, Maybe. like it's a really good season so far, but I don't know. I've it's actually, hard to explain. Yeah, there's only one other. There's only one new, one new show this season. I like, so I'm not too impressed with the season. Oh, I like, uh, let's see. Carol and Tuesday, Vinland Saga. Yeah, I haven't seen those. Kanata no Astra. Uh, kind of Lord El Meloy. It's really slow, but... Yeah, I... But yes, this means that I have more time to enjoy Sinful Gear, so that's good. This is true. I started out this season, like, trying to figure out, like... Like, I was really overworked at the beginning of the season again. Like, uh, just immediately. <laughs> and now I'm like, if I just waited two weeks, and I was like, I'm not watching, like, any of the shows I was now. <laughs> yeah, it's like you have the, like, we have Fruits Basket and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's also Fruits Basket. Fruits Basket, and... God. It is... It is a <laughs> gift to have two good slice of life anime with Carolyn Tuesday and Fruits Basket. In yeah, the same well, season. I have my score thing for the year so far to, like, know my top... And then I have the scores for everything. Sinful Gear, I have ranked as a Sinful Gear out of 10. And Fierce Basket, I have ranked as a Toru out of 10. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. 
Yeah, so I guess uh, conclusions, wrap ups. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, go check out C Tactics channels. Uh, that is plural. They're both in the description. Go join C Tactics Discord where we hang out and talk about Simple Gear and post weird screenshots sometimes because I am too lazy to have my own Discord, so I just kind of leech off his. Yeah, a uh, new episode of Fruits Basket came out. Fry, uh, Fruits Basket podcast came out uh, Friday and. Last yeah. night, we did a live show for King of Anime Podcast where we talked about Carolyn Tuesday. Uh, we talked about Given and Kanato Astro. Oh, I Astro. need to watch Given. Is Given any good? Uh, we're not re- We killed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we killed well. it in the second week. So. <laughs> okay, good to know. I, and... pa- I've, I passed it both weeks. but All right, so it's the Solsovsky's fault then. Well... I kind of agree that <laughs> with with the killing. I just wanted to give it a, a pass because I kind of knew it was going to be killed. And I was like, I don't think it deserves like three kills. I, mean, I don't think it's one of those shows. Okay. Well, so go check out the King of Anime podcast, Fruits Basket podcast. If you want a podcast where you have no idea what we're doing, it's, that's a good one for that. Yeah, Fruits Basket podcast is great. All the links are in the description. Yeah, so see, we never remember to put them all there. But I think I did this time. So we're good. So once again, thank you, and we will be back next Sunday or Monday to talk about more Sinfo gear.